Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. I have our guest today, Ms. Sharon Tiffany, and we are talking about pursuing purpose, okay? Because you can't chase a dream without purpose, okay? Period. Mm-hmm. So Ms. Sharon Tiffany is a native of Richmond, Virginia, and currently works as a social worker to support our youth through re-entry after incarnation, incarceration. Not incarnation, y'all. My bad. <laughs> right. She's a mental health advocate, self-care enthusiast, and supporter of all things that uplift people to pursue their divine purpose in life, whether it be personally or professionally. She also specializes in brand coaching and development in which she aims to coach Black businesses through manifesting their business vision successfully. Welcome to the podcast, Sharon. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I'd like to start off each conversation by asking, what's the dream for you? Mm, The dream for me, you know, um, the big dream is just like, you know, in my bio, just to support people in fulfilling their purpose. Uh, Specifically, I want to focus on Black people Mm -hmm. um, only because with black within the black community um there's so much talent Mm -hmm. there's so much i mean we we basically i mean we are everything (laughs) everyone wants to be like us (laughs) we are the culture right and so i i just know that there's so many people that are not able to have the access to the tools to you know manifest their purpose or they don't even understand what it even means like what is a purpose you know and so for me that's the dream and just being able to live through that and live in my calling and yeah really that's that's it that's it right there yeah so when did you realize the dream and how has it changed over the years yeah so it took me a while to realize that i've always had this dream ever since i was a little girl really mm-hmm. um i've always wanted to help people i've always been i've always been interested in meeting people i'm a social butterfly even though i'm i'm a low-key introvert <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> but um really when i when i really i guess answered the calling was um after college when i got my social work degree Mm-hmm. And I, I noticed that, you know, with social work, it's really a profession where people want you to kind of like be a, uh, be a clinician and be a counselor and a therapist. All right. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I mean, I can do that, but I don't want to be that. I don't want to be this person that, that has you sit on the couch and we talk through all these different things. I want to support you in doing it and making it happen. Yeah. And so um, in college, I had an internship. And it just kind of turned my mind all around and supported me in knowing that, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to coach people. I don't want to tell people what to do. I want to see people be able to thrive in their own right. Mm, mm. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So how did you actually build a brand without sacrificing your personal values? That's a good question. You know, when building a brand, it's really about understanding the purpose of your brand. And a lot of times when people are making brands, they create this thing that doesn't align with who they are. Right. But really, a lot of the best brands are an extension of the creator, whoever One created it. Right. One time for the folks in the back who didn't hear you. Okay. Most <laughs> of the most successful brands are an extension okay of the creator um and when i say that i don't mean that you know it's your picture on all of the products or you know your favorite colors right it it might not be your favorite colors like if my favorite color is purple it might not be a purple in the brand right but when you are thinking about your brand you want it to flow from you you want people to know that this is this is created by so and so and to really be genuine in that and so for me um in me creating my brand, it was really about me just being like true to myself, like mm-hmm. saying, okay, what do, what would I want to invest in as someone who's seeking support from somebody yeah. and what drives me away? And when you are true in yourself, you do attract people that, that are true within themselves or kind of need that. Mm-hmm. And that's really how I built my brand and 
I'm continuing to build it because, you know, another thing is we evolve as beings, right? Like, so the person I am today, I might not be in six months. Right. And so creating a brand that can also evolve over time, you know, we see Walmart, Walmart don't have the same logo that they had when they first started. So yeah. having a brand that is also as evolutionary as you are. Yes. And the first thing that came to mind when you said that was, um, I remember watching an interview that Oprah had done and they asked her like, how did you build such a powerful, you know, multi-billion dollar brand or whatever her brand is worth at this point. Um, and she's like, I never looked at it as a brand. I just did what felt right in my soul. Mm. And whatever that next step was, it had to feel right for me. Um, and I think yes. that really speaks to what you're saying. And not only building the brand, but allowing the brand to ebb and flow as life ebbs and flows. Because mm -hmm. just like you're you're going through things, your audience is too. And they'll ebb and flow right along with you. And you may lose some people as you should. But exactly. at the same time, um, if you try to fight against that shift, you may lose more people because they're changing too. Right, exactly. And another thing that goes into that is that everyone is so different. And so you can't please everyone. Right, right. So, you right. know, you have, so if I'm building a brand based upon pleasing everybody, then it's not going to be, it's, to me, it wouldn't be successful. So yeah. when you're making a brand that has a little bit of your personality, um, your values, right? Like you want a brand that sticks to what you believe in because your customers will be able to see or your clients or you know your audience whoever whatever type of brand you're creating what they will know they will know like oh yeah this is this person is a fraud you know they'll be able to tell they can smell it out <laughs> they sure can and if they can't then it's it's yeah people it can tell eventually mm -hmm. right right so what is purpose and what does it mean to pursue purpose yeah so purpose from my perspective is and i only say that because purpose can mean a lot of things to a lot of people right like all purpose cleaner right but <laughs> right. purpose is the divine calling on your life right and when i mean divine i mean in the spiritual sense something that is god given something yeah. that is from the creator or whoever you believe in mm -hmm. it is a it is a mission for you. It is a path for you. It is a really a personality, right? So the calling over your life might be to be a teacher, mm. but that does not mean teaching in the schools. Right, right. Right. If your purpose is to teach, it means that with everything that you do, you might end up teaching, right? Mm -hmm. You might end up teaching dance. You might end up teaching people how to hair. You might end up teaching people how to uh, conduct business. So it's really a role and a calling, a, a, a form of being that is over your life. Um, and how you pursue that is really, you have to kind of connect with yourself and like, you know, observe who you are. And a lot of us, you know, especially black young people, I would say millennials. Okay. <laughs> We have so many talents. Like we, we like to do everything. You know, we we want to do this, we want to do that. We have a side hustle, a full time job, but a lot of times we don't take the time to connect with our with our inner self. Mm -hmm. And when you connect with your inner self, you'll be able to see like, oh, this is my purpose, or these are the things that I do naturally. Um, and a lot of times you're able to look back when you were like five, ten, you know, fifteen years old. Breadcrumbs you'll see like, oh, wow, I've always been a natural leader or I've always been a natural born uh, comedian, right? Like these things are not things that we have to learn. It's just, it's inside of us and we're born with it. And we have to take the time with ourselves in order to understand how we should go about pursuing it. Um, because if you have a calling over your life, it's going to like, it's going to follow you. Yeah. It's not going to go away, right? Right. So, yeah, for sure. And I just want to say um, in, to you and in front of everyone in my audience, that was confirmation for me that I didn't even know that I needed. Um, I went to undergrad expecting to be a teacher. 
Mm-hmm. And I've always kind of been like, okay, because I, I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. And I feel like our experiences work us up to our purpose. And yeah. so I've always kind of been like, okay, where did that, like, where, why was that at any point um, part of the goal uh, or part of the dream? And I'm like, well, right. what happened? And for you to say, like, how you said it, it really, I, I feel like you were talking to me and didn't even know you were talking to me. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I was like, because I do teach people every day. Like when I'm working with my yeah. clients or um, mostly when I'm working with my one-on-one clients or if when I, I actually coach competitive cheerleading and that's a form of teaching. And yeah. I'm just like, wow, thank yeah. you. Because I needed that. It was almost like, um, I kind of felt like I had abandoned a dream, mm. um, not realizing that I'm still living that dream. It just looks yes. like me. Yes. And that's, and that's the beauty of purpose, right? Like you can get laid off from your job. You can quit a job, but you can't quit your purpose. <laughs> you can't, you just can't. <laughs> you just can't. Sure. <laughs> the purpose is going to be sitting there like, okay, so uh, when are you going to pick me back up? <laughs> ready or what? You ready? What's, what's, what's new today? Yeah. So, you know, just like you said, like a lot of times, especially in the American culture, we're tied to like this idea that, oh, I'm going to school to do this. And if I don't do that, then I wasted my money. Like, no, Mm -hmm. that experience is a part of your purpose. That is that that's, again, purpose is a path. So if I'm going down this path, if I would have never went to school, I would have never known that I wanted to be a teacher, Mm. right? Or that I am a teacher that can teach in different ways. Yes. Yes. So how would you describe your journey to purpose? Ooh, my journey to purpose has been a rocky road. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, fair, it, that's fair. It's been a rocky road because, and, and I'm, I'm in a good space now. We, we off the rocky, we off the rocks, off the gravel path. Okay. But um, really for me, it took me to I think for me, it's it's been about trusting myself, right? Like mm-hmm. I've had, I've struggled with trusting that I can handle this. Like I am this coach or, you know, whoever I want to be, yeah. you know, I am who I say I am. And a lot of times that happens from when we're children, right? We learn if it's okay to trust ourselves. And so yeah. for me, the reason why it's been a rocky road is because I'll do things because I naturally want to do them. And then I'll doubt myself. Or, um, you know, people would say, oh my gosh, you're so this or you're so that, but I wouldn't believe it because I don't, I don't really want to receive it. And so when I look back over my life in so many different areas, I've always been either the youngest person to do something, or I was called, like someone would say, "Uh, hey, can you be the president of this organization? And I'm like, uh, no, (laughs) but then I'll do it and I'll do it greatly because it's a part of my purpose um or you know there'll be a job a job position for me and I'm the only one that applied like what no one else you know what I'm saying so it's like for me and you know even to this day I have learned that purpose is something that you have to be confident in you have to kind of like lean into it and if you don't trust yourself not saying that not saying that you won't be successful but you'll be doing you won't fully understand the power of your purpose and you won't truly understand the opportunities that are available for you hello like because when you're walking in your purpose opportunities flow to you yeah you see what i'm saying yeah you don't come on i was okay. like come a on, somebody. <laughs> But yeah, opportunities, they flow, yeah. they flow to you, right? Or like, like, again, like I said, people, people used to ask me, you know, can you do this? And can you do that? Or we would love to have you do this. And I'm like, what, me? Why? But, you know, again, just being confident. So now I've gotten to a space where I'm like, you know what? I am that. I am this. 
I'm confident. And that's why I knew that I would be in a space that I could coach other people yeah. because it really is a process where, to be honest, you do need people to support you through that. You need people to tell you, um, hey, you know, this is for you. You know, you're loved. You're amazing. You need those positive role models and yeah. guides throughout your purpose. For sure, for sure. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? Number one secret to success. Mm, okay. My number one secret mm. to success is to write it down. Okay. Okay. Write the vision, make it plain. <laughs> write the vision, make it plain, but also write how you're going to make it happen. Put, put on put all your ideas on paper. And I don't say that because, you know, there's no really significant reason for like paper and pen. It's the act of getting it out of your, out of your mind onto a place where you can get it out. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, especially as creatives, like we just kind of, our brain is just like firing off all the time. We have all these amazing visions. And until you learn how to discipline yourself to put it on paper and make it happen, right. say, you know, okay, today I had a vision to do this. I need to get a business license. I need to um, make my logo. Whatever you need to do or you want to do, put it on paper. Mm -hmm. Yes. And understand that being patient with, you have to be patient with that process, right? So like if I'm writing it down, that doesn't mean that it's going to happen tomorrow. Right. But what it means is that I'm committing yeah. myself to making it happen. Yes. And just to add to that, um, I have bad memory. I have had bad memory my whole life. I, but what I have learned is to stop relying on my memory. And even if you're listening to this and you do have good memory, I'm still going to say stop relying on your memory because... Yes. What happens is the less you store in your brain, the more space is available to be creative. Yes. So the less I try to remember, like if I write it down, I put it in my notes app, I put it on my calendar. I have systems in place so that I don't forget things. So it doesn't right. seem like I forgot things. I, I don't remember it. I just put it in my calendar and go on about my day. But exactly. because I have that habit of intentionally not remembering anything, Mm -hmm. My brain has that freedom to come up with ideas and come up with thoughts. And then I write it down and then I move on and then, you know, build it into my calendar to be able to like flesh out the thought, you know, yes. what I mean? um, yes. but that has been such a game changer. So I used to feel bad about having bad memory and trying to force myself to remember things. And then one day I was like, fuck it. I got bad <laughs> memory. The show goes on. Let's just put some processes in place so we yes. can move on. And when I did that, that's when I started to see not only my creative space grow, but my ability to hear God through my thoughts yes. a lot better because yes. he can get through. Like if your brain is clogged up with your thoughts, he can't get through. Like <laughs> it's a traffic jam up there. <laughs> it's, it's real. It's real. And another thing with memory is that how, how in the world? I was supposed to remember everything when we got this bill, that bill, this meeting, that meeting, uh, this assignment, that assignment. If you got kids, if you got, it's, it's too, we're not built. We are not built as a human being to remember everything. And so to your point, give yourself space to, to, to think and feel yeah. and, and have that creative space and also to rest and relax. Yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't Think 24-7. You can't do it. Okay. Okay. So what final thoughts do you have for us as an audience? You know, my final thoughts is, is just wrapped around, you know, the notion of just dig deeper into yourself. Um, take time for yourself. And when I say that, I don't mean just going and getting a little manicure, okay, <laughs> getting your hair did, okay, going shopping. Which, what I mean cool. is... But... <laughs> It do help. It do help after this quarantine. Okay. okay I'm going to be the first I'm going to get it all. I'm going to get it all together. That's what I was. That's Hello. Like, I had to do I'm my ready own to be hair. a bad bitch, okay? I'm ready. I had to do my own hair and it ain't happening no more. Okay. But, <laughs> but take time to get to know who the hell you are. Who are you outside of 
outside of your degree, outside of your family, outside of your job, outside of your relationship, outside of uh, your Instagram, who are you? Who are you on the inside? What does your, what makes your soul jump for joy? What yeah. makes you what makes you calm down and come back to peace? Again, a lot of these things we knew when we were kids because as a child you're able to imagine as a child you know if you grew up in a positive environment you had people around you that let you run free through the trees outside when when we used to run outside back in the day uh kids don't go outside anymore but (laughs) give yourself the time to get to know you Mm -hmm. your soul not just your name, not just your reputation, but just give yourself time. And that's how you will know what your purpose is. Yeah. And a lot of times, another thing to that point is when you open up that space, that channel of energy that connects you to yourself, people will be drawn to you mm-hmm. that you never even would have talked to. The right okay? people. The right people. Okay. Don't, don't push them away. People will get ejected from your life that should not have been there and also can we talk about it can we talk about it because that's another thing with purpose sometimes when you are um pursuing your purpose you do have to let people off the ride they can't ride with you to your dream they it's not meant for them to enjoy your purpose and so take that time do what you need to do whether it's going to therapy i highly recommend therapy absolutely Um, whether it's um, you know, disconnecting from social media and technology, whether it's getting into meditation, whether it's church for you, whatever it is for you, you know, whether it's, you know, getting into understanding your, your, your mind and your body and you're so connecting because we're all, this is all connected. You're not just, a, you're not just a soul. You're not just a body. You are mind, body, and soul. So that's just my final thoughts. Connect yeah. with yourself. And you will, it, it's a journey. It's not a destination. You will probably never, ever get to a ceiling in your life until the day that we all pass on. Okay. We all, even 80-year-olds, still have purpose. Have a journey and a so, purpose, yeah. Have a journey and a purpose. So, Absolutely. yeah, just take that time. Thank you so much for all the gems you dropped today. Where can people yes. find you? So people can find me on Instagram at Sharon Tiffany. Um, that's spelled S-H-A-R-R-O-N Tiffany underscore. Um, and I'm on Facebook, but just follow me on Instagram. Just Instagram. <laughs> just Instagram. Yes. I'll add on the gram, okay? <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been a great conversation. Um, I know I've gotten a lot, including some confirmation. So thanks. <laughs> Thanks for letting the Lord use you, okay? Come on now. Come on. Won't he do it? Thanks, guys.